Good evening, and welcome to the Behavioral Bulletin Special Report. I'm your host, Evan Davis. My co-hosts, Ashley Moore and Charlotte Petrovich, could not make it this evening, as they are on special report in the field. If you'll look around the Behavioral Bulletin, however, you'll find special messages from each of them regarding behavior management. And now, our feature presentation. A report I made about one teacher's search for the right behavioral theory. So class, we've talked about nouns and verbs and adjectives. I have a simple sentence here. I went to the library. I need somebody to raise their hand and tell me which one of these words is a verb and which one is a noun. The what is the verb and library is a noun. Come on, you had to be thinking. I could answer a question for once. Sorry. As I said, I need you to raise your hand before you talk, okay? That kid, that kid, he was driving me crazy. No matter how many times I told him, he never raised his hand and almost always shouted out. I decided to pull out the big guns. First, I tried to dress like a psychologist to get into the mood. Then I got out a textbook called Applied Behavior Analysis for Teachers by Alberto and Troutman. I learned a lot from that book, including a little something called biophysical theory. You see, behavior problems are caused by genetic and hereditary sources. Some disorders have genetic origin, like anxiety disorder, depression, schizophrenia, oppositional defiant disorder, conduct disorder, and even ADD and ADHD. That's it! There must be some sort of genetic link. Okay, Lou. Some disorders are genetic. I think perhaps you have a hyperactivity running in your family? Although there may be an association, it's not verifiable. He was right, of course. Any theory that's not verifiable is worthless in application. I dug back in to Alberto and Troutman for something I might have missed. And boy, did I find it. Biochemical theory. Behavioral problems are caused by excesses or deficiencies of various bodily substances. It was simple. He was obviously hyperactive. He must have an allergic reaction. I think you have possibly allergies running in your family because uh, allergies have been linked with hyperactivity disorders. Although there may be an association, it's not verifiable. Curses. He was right again. Once again, that theory was not verifiable. Links don't prove causation. Any kid can tell you that. I decided to go back undercover. Undercover of Alberto and Troutman, that is. Then I found what I was looking for. Yes, it was Freud's own ideas applied to education. You see, behavior disorders are caused by a fixation on one of Freud's stages of development, or regression into a previous stage. That's when I landed on the theory that fit my student to a T. A person fixated at the oral aggressive stage may be sarcastic or verbally abusive. I think it is possible that you have an oral aggressive stage fixation because you are sarcastic and verbally abusive. Psychoanalysis is in order. I want you to think back, back, 
back to when you were very young. You mean like yesterday? Since all processes take place internally, it's not possible to prove their existence. Well, that kid was batting a thousand. Because he was right again. All those processes may be taking place all right, but there was no way for me to measure them. Therefore, Freud's theories were useless to me for educational behavioral applications. I trudged onward, onward, onward into Alberto and Troutman until I landed on what must be the answer. Piaget's theories. His theories had to do with stages, too, with a few major differences. Mainly, the idea that to accommodate the inner self to the outer world, the student must develop a new schema. That's all. It's so simple. Why didn't I see it before? According to Piaget, you children are little scientists, always trying to make sense of the world. You may be fixated upon the pre-operational stage because your language development is faulty and you fail to understand the symbolic significance of following the rules of the classroom. You see, you've changed your perception of the world to fit your inner world. What you need to do, however, is change your inner world to fit the outer world. In short, you need to develop a new schema. All processes take place internally, so they are not verifiable. I was beginning to think maybe my student should have written his own textbook when I finally stumbled upon one more theory. It had been there all along, I just hadn't noticed it. Like a shiny stone just beneath the surface of a stream. It was a little something called behavioral theory. It was all pretty simple, really, and easy for me to understand. All behavior is learned. It talked about a little something called positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement is what you give a student to encourage their repeating a certain behavior. Types of positive reinforcement can be primary, like food, or secondary, like stickers and stuff. Then I stumbled upon a little technique behaviorists like to call extinction. That's where you ignore a kid's behavior and the behavior goes away. Eureka! I would implement a positive reinforcement plan to the entire class for remaining quiet. And at the same time, I'd ignore Caleb's shouting out he would no longer receive any reinforcement from me or the kids by way of attention for his shouting out, thereby putting his unfavorable activity into extinction and replacing it with raising his hand before talking. I knew what I had to do. Now all that was left was to put it into action. Caleb? For every day that you don't shout out and only raise your hand, I'll give you a pick of items from teacher's treasure box. Okay, class, we're going to implement a new plan today. For every class period that you remain quiet, and do not shout out, but only raise your hand and don't talk until called upon. I will give you one star on this sheet. A scoring sheet. They kind of look like smiley faces. They do indeed, but the stars are where the smiling faces are. Oh. 
printed into. Anyone who gets a full sheet's worth, which is one week's worth, of these stars and smiley faces printed up, will get their pick from the magical teacher's treasure box. <gasps> Okay, so uh, let's try the next one. Who can tell me what 3 times 11 is? 33. Um, Robert? 33. Good job. Thank you for raising your hand, Robert. Who can tell me what 7 times 4 is? Uh, Jaleesi? 28, 28. 28, it's 28. 28. Good, Jaleesi. Thank you for raising your hands. <laughs> the AU sound, also known as a diphthong here, it has uh, two different sounds. One is aw, and the other is, uh, who can tell me? Uh, Robert? Short A. Ah. Exactly. It has the sound of a short A, even though there's a U there. Latin words such as laugh. And so we've got fault or vault and also the word laugh. And both two very different sounding sounds from the same vowel pair, also known as diphthong, AU. Uh, thank you, class. You've been very good uh, today. We appreciate it. And as always, you making big improvements. Give me five, buddy. All right. Behaviorism, it works.